I thought you would show up. Hello, everyone. Welcome to On the Bright Side. Let's, let's get those lights on. My name is Daniel, and I am watching Code Geass. Not only am I watching Code Geass, but I am finishing Code Geass today. I have, for the past year, been watching Code Geass every week, almost without fail, and I have been really loving it. And last time on Code Geass, we came to a crossroads of sorts. Suzaku is fighting against Colin, and Lelouch is facing Nunnally, perhaps for the last time. I have a feeling, though, that we are going to see what the Zero Requiem means for this world today. I have been waiting for this moment for so long, because I've heard that this is one of the best anime endings ever, and I can't... And, you know, I'm trying to keep my expectations low. You guys have all been very supportive of me. You guys can t continue to show your support by subscribing and liking my videos, watching more videos from me. I've done a lot of series. You might go check my playlist, see if you find something that you didn't know I watched. But I will be continuing more anime after this. And don't leave after the episode is over because I'm going to get my thoughts and then have a Q&A from comments that you guys have left. And then I will be giving you guys some input on what to do next with the Code Geass franchise. But enough preamble. We gotta get into the final episode. Episode 50. Turn 25. Reply. Or re semicolon. All right, let's get off this blinding white screen in three, two, one, go. Some epic music to start. The battle is raging, but Nunley has opened her eyes. It looks wrong, almost, that she has her eyes open. Hi. Rude, but not wrong. Yeah, I guess. Well, we've been in the same position then, huh? I don't know if he'll do it, though. Yeah, he's never even thought about it. Oh, never mind, he's thought about it a lot. <laughs> but for that reason. Alright, we do get the last opening. Damn, I was kind of hoping it was colors. <laughs> I do love the visuals of this opening, though. Final turn. <sighs> These two have faced off many times. I don't think he craves how. Oh, boy. Can't die, remember? Meanwhile, shit sucks down in Tokyo. That's what I wanted to. They are going in on the animation. Ooh, boy. It is true that you didn't ask for this. <sighs> this fight is intense. <laughs> God. <laughs> I love having philosophical debates while fighting. She's like, I, we, we just had a moment. Well, it looks like that's not happening. Everyone is facing death. I don't like it. So many people are having thoughts. 
I mean, I do think that the Gios is pretty morally wrong. I just don't think that's how it works. You got the same idea. Well, I did use it on her. Does it work, though? Is she immune somehow? No. <sighs> oh, <laughs> there's more. Damn, Jeremiah. <laughs> Damn, Jeremiah. I feel bad for her. Nope. He can use it on her. Hmm. So, Lelouch said something that made me think that he's trying to become the, the hate symbol for everyone. Oh my god, what is that? This fight is crazy. Ooh. Uh, uh, yeah, I was like, someone catch her! Something tells me, though, that that wasn't the end for Suzaku. What is this path, Lelouch? What are you gonna do? He said that to her well. She was Gios, though. But I have come, you've come up against your one enemy stairs. Sorry, that's <laughs> It's maybe the plan though. Didn't kill her though. Hmm. Oh! A flare? He does have control of that. Yep. I did like how Lelouch only used his Gias to make Nunley do something very similar, or simple and nothing else. Is... Is he doing the, uh... Attack on Titan thing and making him the enemy himself the enemy of the entire world. All right, two months later. Okay, okay. It controls the world. Oh boy. Suzaku's grave. Why don't I believe it, though? <laughs> Everyone's all like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is grim. Is he actually doing that, though? I'm very curious. I trust his plan, but... Yeah, and that's what Lelouch has been doing. <laughs> Bitter about... Did he steal pudding from you? <laughs> I have a question about that to answer later. Zero! <laughs> A zero. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> well, I know one person who can do that. That's a Suzaku. <laughs> Canonically can dodge bullets. Yeah, it's the plan. And then you kill 
Lelouch. Yeah. And then you become the savior. Yeah, I kind of had a feeling it would come down to Lucia's death, but I didn't know this was. Oh boy. そう。俺は人々に生きやすい形を示しようとして撃たれる覚悟のあるやつだけだ。うーん。やさだ。すぐ。お前は永遠になるんだ。ゼロ。ああ。ジュジュ。これはお前にとっても罰だ。正義の味
be the saviors and then peace will be achieved that way which didn't work it did not work in attack on titan but in this show this show is like if it worked you know i guess what i'll say is attack on titan was one of my favorite anime endings ever <laughs> so i guess i gotta consider this one of the better anime endings that i've seen but maybe having the knowledge, you know, of the Attack on Titan ending, I think it made my expectations want it to be different. And it was certainly different in a couple of ways. I, again, the key thing is that it does bring about a happy ending. I mean, it, it also, again, this ending puts into context so much of Lelouch's actions over the past a couple of episodes. Suzaku had to become zero and he has to remain zero for the rest of his life if he talks won't people know i mean the the entire okay this has been like a thing that i've thought about the entire series does the mask have a voice modulator we know it like has an echo effect but given the fact that suzaku he should be able to talk through it or, or else people are gonna be like why do you never talk zero <laughs> It probably has a voice changer effect um, that was never, like, properly. I mean, I've thought about it because, like, Nunnally would surely recognize Zero's voice. I'm glad that Nunnally, in the end, really did realize why Lelouch was doing all of that. I definitely still, at the end of this episode, consider him an anti-hero. But if his sacrifice brings about an era of peace, then it really is... He's really lived up to the hero part of it. But of course, long had he carried the sins of all of the terrible deeds that he did. It makes me wonder how long has this been his plan? Obviously, the Zero Requiem is the name for this specific version of it. But how long has it been his plan to be the villain who dies to save the world, to bring about peace? Because essentially what Lelouch did... Aw, oh, man. Okay, now that I'm thinking about it more, my opinion of the ending is climbing! <laughs> okay, okay. So, essentially what he's done by taking over the world was remove all barriers, unify the world under him, and then remove himself so they're still unified. <sighs> That's crazy. That's a crazy plan. Destroy the world so... I can create it anew. What an insane final choice of words. That part about the carriage at the end. I also might be just talking out of my ass with that. About like the driver could possibly be Lelouch. I feel kind of dumb for jumping to conclusions. Because maybe that's not the correct conclusion to come to. Maybe she's talking to Lelouch in C's world. Maybe he continues to live there. Maybe she can communicate with him. Maybe she was just, like, talking metaphorically to Lelouch. To the... It it closed up on the origami... Hold on, we're going back to that scene. Does the... Does at the very edge of this... Does he have dark hair? <laughs> does, am I reading too much into that? This is the final shot that this show ends on. Guys, did I forget what paper cranes meant to this show? <laughs> Did I, in the opening, Nunnally throws one? It did. Is this something from Nunnally? I can't remember if I'm forgetting something. <laughs> Maybe saying that the person driving this cart is Lelouch is jumping to conclusions because he, like, looked like he super died. What if he, in reality, pulled one more trick over, faked his death, and... Okay. So I guess, after doing a little bit of research, this pap this pink paper crane is important because it was a gift from Nunnally to Lelouch. If that's the case, does C2 have it? Because to remember Lelouch by, uh, apparently also C2 was trying to make a pink paper crane at some point in the series that I don't remember, so maybe she finally finished it and it was going to be a gift for Lelouch or is this the same 
paper crane that has somehow survived. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a comment discussion about this. In that short bit of research, I'm not the only one who thinks that Lelouch is, could possibly still be alive at the end of this. I I think actually like you know as opposed to like Attack on Titan, it would be kind of a weird thing to have like the main character still be alive. In this show, it would feel more earned because Lelouch has earned it. I, I have a feeling that I am stepping into a huge fucking debate, so I'm gonna step out of it for a second, and we can talk about some of the rest of the epilogue in the episode. So, uh, during the battle, there was a part where we got to see a bunch of people's thoughts and and what, what they were working for. I, I'm amazed no one fucking died. <laughs> But the like in this battle I'm talking about, like none of the important named characters died. I feel like there were a lot of images going through the like we there's a picture with everyone on it, um, but in this battle we got to see everyone hoping for a future, which is exactly what Lelouch was trying to give to them. And I I will say Lelouch kind of with his internal monologue gave away the his plan by saying like to Nunnally or thinking to Nunnally, oh, you're trying to do the same thing as me, become the villain for everyone to... That's what the Damocles was. Actually, like, seeing Lelouch's plan, yeah, fucking... <laughs> Schneisel's plan was so dumb in comparison. He essentially wanted to do the same thing, but he was going to kill so many more people. In in this way, really only... It only requires the death of one person. And for Suzaku to essentially sacrifice his soul for his country, which he's always wanted to do anyway. Yeah, Suzaku, man. Uh, that is a interesting ending for that character. I, I, I super knew he didn't die to Colin. Like, obviously, I'm like... But I didn't know he was going to come back as Zero. I wonder what changed in Suzaku that made the cat accept him, made Arthur be like, yes, this is my best friend now. But I love that. Uh, I didn't notice it while watching the last episode, but when I was editing, I was like, Whoa! He's holding him and he's not biting him! Ah! So Lelouch's order on Nunnally was he said he had thought about res using his Gios to restore her sight for a long time. Lelouch's Gios order on Nunnally was just to give him the key. It was very soft, you know? He, he would not ask anything more of her and just give her the last piece of his plan and then and then you'll see. And I kept saying, hey guys, just wait and see. I know that they had no reason to because they know that Lelouch has betrayed so many people, which is exactly, I guess, what made him the best world-dominating villain, you know? I just had to rewatch this scene. So... Colin is one of the few people that actually knows that Lelouch being Zero is the real deal because Lelouch is very honest about his feelings towards her. She knows that, that there was that scene where she was all like, no, that's that's Zero. Cause, and, and she like instantly knew what part she had to play in this. She must know. I mean, she said like the world's been better, Lelouch, so she must have mixed feelings. Feelings of like, dang, I really did love him. And that he was, he did all this so that she could continue to live towards the future. Colin's mom is doing better. Look at them all over here. Still in Japan. So I wanted to look at this image really bad because this would show us everyone. L look at them all. All in very fun outfits. <laughs> but yeah, this is who all survived. Look at these two. Look at her. You can tell she's blushing she's all like that's gonna be me someday soon i'm trying to figure out who we're missing here best man <laughs> sorry where's uh jinku because i see her here but he should also be here jeremiah just hard at work sure i mean he was always like very loyal to lelouch so he's just like i'm gonna enjoy the world that he left for us it's a very happy ending it's interesting you will notice this if you, like, start thinking about it. A lot 
of stories end on weddings. This did not seem like the type of show to end on a wedding to me, but I guess I, I approve. It, it shows, though, like, the progress that's been made that, like, you know, someone from Britannia and someone from Japan can get married. And they're working on solving world hunger. Let's go. With all that being said, I think I've talked enough about this, but I will be glad to talk about it more in the comments. I'm surprisingly happy after that ending. It's just... It's surprisingly happy. But I have saved numerous questions that you all have asked. And I will try to answer as many of them as possible. So let's begin the Q&A. A, a lot of you asked groups of questions, so I'm going to go by user. So at LukeEricBlue958 asked, Do I consider myself more of a Suzaku or a Lelouch? Which is a very complicated question i would say that like over the course of this show uh some of you have pointed out that i've been a lot more charitable to suzaku than a lot of people and i think it's because i get his like perspective a lot more i don't think i could do things like lelouch did i do not think that i would be able to make the necessary sacrifices so i myself am probably more of a Suzaku, I guess. It's also because I can dodge bullets. Also, I really liked Yuffie, so I think that means that I am a Suzaku if, if Yuffie was one of my favorite characters. Second question you asked, what is the single best way the story could resolve? Well, uh, now that I've seen it resolve, this is kind of the resolution that I foresaw in some way. I mean, I find it interesting because the only the only other way that this store ending to the story could be better is that if Lu Lelouch gets to survive and enjoy the peaceful world that he created, which there are many theories, it seems that that is indeed what happened. So this might be the best world line that we live in. I guess so there are movies that have different endings to the story we'll talk about that later the third question you asked was of all the controversial pizza styles and toppings in this show which ones would you consider good uh and i gotta say i don't remember them that much i might look up a picture hold on so looking up some of the pictures there's like the p pizza with the shrimp on it the pizza with the broccoli on it I, and I'm just going to say you can get the broccoli off of my pizza. I don't like broccoli at all. So you can get that off. Uh, I feel like shrimp actually would be good on pizza. I don't know what the white sauce on top of it was, but I, I'll say this. Never in my life have I been so disgusted as them showing me the like hot dog pigs in a blanket crust pizza. And I want it. I want to try it really bad. <laughs> it looks so gross. That's how I want to die. Eating one of those pizzas. So that's my answer. Uh, I want to try the hot dog crust pizza and die. Next we have at... Uh, I'm bad at reading usernames. Mari Ami? Maria Me? <laughs> Mar <-i -ami. laughs> Tell me which one of those is correct. <laughs> We've got revisiting the Lelouch Light Yagami comparison after the finale, what are my thoughts? That's a really bad comparison of characters, is basically my thoughts. Like, you start off like, well, maybe it's not that bad. I just ended up thinking that, like, the a better comparison was Aaron Yeager and Lelouch. But Lelouch is like if Aaron Yeager were not an idiot, you know? <laughs> I, I feel like, um... Light Yagami is very clearly the villain of the story, and we're just from his perspective, and that makes uh, Death Note really interesting. I think that's the, like, wanting to change the world is about where the similarities end. Lelouch would never think that the way to change the world would be to kill all the bad people in it. That is basically what Schneisel wanted to do. Light's thing 
the reason why he's a villain and Lelouch isn't is that Light doesn't really have anyone he cares about. He's alone and he's bored by the world. He does what he does like on a whim, almost. Like it would, like it's an interesting thing. He's like, I could coast through life, but why not make it challenging and interesting for me? Um, whereas Lelouch, he had friends, he had reasons to save the world. Uh, he had reasons to make it better. And he had much more to lose than his own life. Spoilers for Death Note, I guess. Light at the end. In the manga, I don't, it doesn't show this so much in the anime but he like begs for his life lelouch accepts his death they're very different characters in terms of just like how they present themselves and what their motivations are um and what their lived experiences are they're both amazing characters in their own right but <laughs> all right that was a long answer so the next question is over the course of the series your opinion on which character changed most drastically? That's a good question. I didn't think about it. I should have thought about that before starting this. I mean, my opinion on Lelouch changed a lot because he just had so many things, so many layers to his character that I just kept changing some of my thoughts about him. You know, I've always liked Suzaku. I've always kind of been sort of sympathetic towards Nina, but I, it, she might be the character that my mind has changed the most on because I went from being all like, oh, she has like reasons for having the biases that she does to, okay, she's a little bit obsessive to, oh God, please don't blow us up. Then she created a bomb and I was like, you, how could you do this? And then she was all like, how could I do this? And I'm like, what the fuck? And in the end, she, I guess, redeemed some part of that. So Nina is a character that you go on a roller coaster with. Maybe it's been a while since she's been in the show, but surely had me starting off. I'm like, oh, generic childhood friend to the death in this show that like actually affected me the most. It was super brutal. I was, I really was into her as a character by the end of, by the end of it. But yeah, there's a lot of characters that you kind of flip flop between like, do I like them? Do I not like them? Rolo, you're constantly all like, do I like him? Do I not like him? <laughs> do I feel sympathetic for him? Do I hate him because he killed Shirley? These are legitimate questions. <laughs> it's kind of like a big thing about this show is that everyone has like two faces. They all wear masks. What? is your version of Lloyd and Rakshata's backstory. Yeah, that was something that was kind of brought up as like... So, I mean, the the thing that I think it's supposed to be implying is that, and through the uh, through some of the images in the endings, is that they were like research buddies in a lab in college. And I imagine that at some point, Rakshata had some pudding that she put in the fridge. And Lloyd, that dumbass, took it out and ate it. <laughs> who since branded the Earl of Pudding. That fuck. But I, uh, I imagine that they were just like, they used to be partners and friends. They probably went separate ways, not because of that, but because of like actual differences in scientific philosophies that was, as we've seen throughout this. I kind of like the idea that like, you know, many of the people in this show are made by the happy memories. Oh yeah, and Anya... Did she get her memories back? Or I guess she got her Gios removed, so now she can actually create memories, which is why she was with Jeremiah at the end there. These memories of the simple times are so important to all of these characters that... And in reality, a lot of us are built off of the silly, fun times that we've had. Pain builds us too, but also just like times where we laugh and times where we're happy, so I don't know. That's my version of their backstory, um, but I think it doesn't matter. It's just, like, something goofy. I don't write a lot of fanfiction, but I like writing backstory fanfiction, so, you know, I may. And finally, we have a bunch of questions from Min Sakura 281 You've left a lot of comments, uh... And I, appreci I, I, I appreciate every one of them. They're all very insightful. And you praise me. <laughs> you, 
you got a lot of questions. So let's get into them. I think you have seven. <laughs> First question. Lelouch is a very popular popular main character, topped Mal list almost since the series started. What do you think is his appeal? Uh, I just think that like he's very well written and you see a lot of his character and he has flaws. Oh, he's such a flawed character, right? And people love flawed characters. Whether it be like a minor flaw, like the fact that he's not athletic, <laughs> which is endearing, or be a major flaw, like the fact that his own arrogance sometimes allows him, like, allows people to die on his watch. People really like characters that they get into their psychology in the show. In, like, the, if they get into the nitty gritty. And I think Lelouch having you get to see a lot of his perspective over the course of this show and people really appreciate that i think he's an amazing character i can see why he's one of the most popular characters but i mean like for example my favorite anime is marsh comes in like a lion the main character of that the show gets super in depth on his psychology and it pays off in huge ways so i really like when shows get really into characters and they make them feel like real people the more you focus on many of their character traits and yeah i think a lot of people like lelouch i don't know how many people like relate to him but he's just so fascinating to watch and so fun i think that's another thing is that you have to make your main character fun to watch because if your main character is boring then you end up with a lot of isekais it is, is honestly where a lot of generic anime get tripped up is that they make their main characters kind of self inserty and then put them into like fantasy situations give them something that they want and give them some kind of ability to do it make it somehow possible but also stack the odds against them but hey that's just me this is how i would write it a character two what are your favorite moments in the series jesus christ that might be an entire separate <laughs> video i'll give you a couple of lists uh, I think one of the most jaw-dropping moments in the series is when Lelouch uses his Gios on Yuffie on accident. I think that that moment is so... It so changes everything. Many of Lelouch's plans go up there as, like, being really cool. I really like getting C2's backstory. Yeah, I can list off a lot. Season 1 finale, the way that it ended, is like, mwah, chef's kiss. I like the chase for the cat. That was an early episode that I was like, that's great. The entire show is like a highlight reel, so. <laughs> what are the most touching moments in the series? Oh, well. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. The f first time that Lelouch has to use his Gios on Shirley, that's a rough moment. And then when she dies, those are moments that are heart-wrenching, so not exactly touching. I think the moment in the finale where Nunley realizes that, like, Lelouch really was doing this all f for her benefit was touching i just think that their relationship is really is a really good core of this franchise it's so simple and so relatable i think that in general suzaku and yuffie's relationship has been or was really really cute and like you know suzaku basically finding a reason to live again through that that was that was touching but of course that was taken away so those are a couple a couple good ones is there anything you would change about r2 or code geass in general slower pace more other character portrayals rather than only lelouch yeah lelouch gets a lot of focus for sure lelouch and suzaku are like we're writing these characters and everyone else is kind of kind of accessory I, I think you can tell that you could go a lot in depth on any of these characters. So I would probably slow the pace down more in R2 specifically. If I'm going to be honest, season one is better, in my opinion. I really liked season one. I felt like it was much better on like social commentary aspects and the fighting being more at like the ground level what made it more intense feeling season two seemed to focus a lot on the fighting i would change that we like the mech fighting but 
does anyone really like remember at the end of the day this show for the mech fighting no what you remember it is for the characters so i would have replaced a lot of a lot of fighting scenes if you cut out like half of it from this season i don't think you lose that much and i would replace that with more character moments i wish i liked colin more you know I wish that sh we got more of her backstory, we got more of her her past relationship with her brother. More focus on C2 as well, because I think she's a really interesting character that needs more development. I wish they expanded on Lucia's relationship with the student council. Because I feel like while that was definitely an emotional core for Lelouch, it was not expanded upon as much as it could be. If this Emperor Lelouch thing never happened, what do you think Lelouch would do after all the Sea World stuff? Like, if he didn't, like, kill the Emperor, or or just decided to, like, not become the Emperor of Britannia? You know, if he, if he just didn't do that, I, I don't... I don't know. That's a that's a that's a question that I I don't know if I have an answer to. Do you like R one or R two story better in execution? Why? Oh, okay, so I already answered that. Yeah, I like I like R one more. I think season one um, was overall better. There was a lot of philosophically interesting things, uh, and it played more with the idea of the Gios and more and the morality around that. In season two, Lelouch has doesn't have to be as clever with how he uses uses his Gios because he's got a lot of allies. But I really liked the building of the Rebellion. Um, you know, the subtitle of this show is Lelouch of the Rebellion. You know, that seeing that change form is cool in some ways, but I liked the smaller thing. Maybe because I like Star Wars, and I like small rebellions taking down big empires. And you had one other question. What do you think about the Ashford School episodes in the series? I've seen few reactors who have hated them, and deem them as filler. Um, they basically wanted <laughs> Code Geass to be more Attack on Titan, which I can tell you that, like, I like I said, this is like Attack on Titan, the Attack on Titan ending, if it was the good ending, right? Uh, I think Attack on Titan's ending is very realistic, but this show always had a tinge of being, like, we just want these kids to be kids, and we want them to be teenagers and to have fun so i really appreciate the ashford academy episodes because i again i would even tolerate more character building i really like i mean i watch a lot of high school anime not so much anymore but i've watched a lot of like slice of life school anime in my time and so that was just kind of like oh i love this but i can see reactors who like this is kind of like a gateway anime for a lot of people not for me. I've seen way too many anime. So I was like par for the course, but I can see how some people would be like, why aren't we focusing on the plot? I'm like, this is the plot. It's character building. <laughs> and it's important. I, I really find those episodes to be funny and good. So yeah, that is all of the questions. But I have a couple questions for you guys. It's about the spinoffs. So there are a lot of spinoffs, and I'm just wondering if you guys want me to do any of them the movies i've seen some debate about them in my comments already i know that most of it is recap but some of you guys were saying that it's like an alt that it has like an alternate timeline is are they worth watching first of all second of all are they worth reacting to i'll watch them but i don't know if i'll react to them i might save them for like a potential movie poll also i don't know if they're mostly recap you guys will have to tell me if the if that's worth it there's also like other series like akito the exiled and the one that's airing right now again if the demand is high enough i might react but I'm gonna guess, based on the ratings of Akito the Exile and the one that's currently airing, you guys don't care that much. Because I believe that while they're in the Code Geass universe, they don't have, like, the same story punch. But if if enough of you guys in the comments are all like, yes, please do Akito the Exile. Like, I've done, for Bungo Stray Dogs, I did the comedy shorts. I'd be willing to do some more spinoff stuff. But it might push back me getting to another anime so I might not do it for a bit. 
speaking of the comedy shorts, also, maybe I could do some of the specials? There are a lot of fucking specials. So, uh, I'll tell you what, though. One thing that I would be absolutely willing to react to is Code Ment, the abridged by Purple Eyes. I know the whole, where are you right now? I'm at soup. What do you mean you're at soup? But I just saw that, like, episode 18 of that abridged just got released. So, and I, I his comedy is so absurd, but I love it. Um, I'd absolutely be willing to react to that. That That is my biggest open invitation. The other ones, I'm a little bit iffy on if I really want to do them. At least so soon after watching this. But I would absolutely be willing to just, like, every now and again jump in on uh, Code Ment. Because I've wanted to watch some of Bridges on this channel, like uh, the Unlimited Blade Works abridge as well. Let me know about those. But with all that being said, I have to go to bed. This has been like the longest recording that I've done on this channel since I watched like The Batman. And I hope you guys appreciate that. I really wanted to make it a special ending for all of you because this has been my longest running series and I it's 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 really hurting me to, to see it go uh thank you all for joining me on this journey I hope that you'll stick around for many more if you do want to stick around be sure to subscribe plenty of anime that I still have yet to watch so I'm gonna be setting up a poll after this for a replacement some anime from a similar time period, I think most of the ones I'm putting on here are, so... But, yeah, if you guys like my reaction to this episode or this series, be sure to leave a like and leave a comment. Let me know your final thoughts. Any more questions, I'll answer. I'll try to answer in the comments. You know, what was your favorite reaction from me? How about that? How about you answer one of my questions? <laughs> Give me your theories on Code Geass. That being said, I hope that I can make your day better, and I hope that you continue to have a good day. Until next time, take it easy, everyone. Let's try to make the world a better place. See ya in the future. Mm -hmm.